special for May 28th. Good evening, I'm Rick Roberts. For years, Americans have lived in homes of their own and thought little of it. Then our economy went sour, and the dream of home ownership slipped beyond the reach of many people. To buy a home these days, you'll probably need a big down payment, be able to afford some hefty mortgage payments, and chances are you'll have to find an ingenious way to beat the high cost of mortgages. Inflation and high interest rates have meant hard times for builders and have slowed sales of existing homes. Tonight we hope to find out what's happening to the housing industry, where things currently stand, and what we can expect in the future. First though, a look at the new home business. This is a rare sight these days, carpenters and other craftsmen building new homes. These homes will be part of Des Moines Home Expo Show in August. Bill McLaughlin is building one of the houses a 10-year veteran of the home building business, McLaughlin is president of the Greater Des Moines Home Builders Association. He says this is not the best of times for association members. Right now the new home industry is pretty depressed in the fact that uh, high interest rates are causing a slowdown in construction. We get uh, caught by interest rates right now which are nationally uh, are very high and we of course are paying for those high interest rates and in addition inflation is causing uh, materials to go up, labor to go up and so forth so it's basically money. Not long ago builders would construct homes and there would be plenty of buyers. There are still a lot of people who want to buy new homes but inflation and high interest rates have put their dreams on hold. A buyer comes along and he goes in to work on his financing, uh, he finds that the high interest rates, then it's difficult for him to qualify. I hope that uh, President Reagan's uh, economic program uh, turns this around real quick like, and I have faith that it will. The building slump could lead to yet another problem, the loss of skilled workers. This is another major concern of ours. Uh, our craftsmen and our subs that work on our jabs, if they're not able to obtain work here, they go elsewhere. If they stay in that other location and do not come back, then we're in trouble. When things start to come back, we've lost our trained people. Since new homes are too expensive for most potential buyers, they are turning instead to the existing home market. But once again, high interest rates prevent a lot of people from buying. But sales are starting to pick up. The Greater Des Moines Board of Realtors says 458 houses were sold in April. That's up 58% from the same month last year. Well, I think the demand is there, and people uh, have become accustomed to paying a little higher interest rates. Uh, they are uh, needing to move. The key to getting more people into homes of their own now is the availability of money. Well, we need uh, some incentive for people to save, which creates capital for uh, the market. Uh, the demand for capital has been great, as you know. Uh, some incentive for people to go back to savings so that it does create those funds for first mortgages. Uh, reduction of interest rates. As inflation comes down, we hope the interest rates will come down. Kirk says realtors have to work harder than ever these days to help buyers find ways to finance a house. They'll have the old standby, the FHA and the VA programs, which are fixed rate interest rates. Uh, land contracts or contracts for deeds where the seller, uh, basically the seller lends the money to the buyer. Uh, there are new mortgage programs coming along all the time. Uh, we try to explain those to the buyers and to the sellers and which fits their uh, particular uh, uh, case the best and that's what we try to do be it a new house or an existing home. Builders and realtors all say now is the time to buy. They reason that even if the economy gets better and interest rates come down, the house that sells for $60,000 this year will cost a lot more next year. 
Despite the discouraging atmosphere surrounding the housing industry, people are buying houses. A young Ames couple decided the experts are right, and now is indeed the time to buy, even though it's expensive. They decided to get a home of their own before the dream slipped beyond their reach. Kim Randall and her husband Dave had been thinking about buying a home of their own for a couple of years. Soon they'll be moving out of this Ames duplex and into their own home, a ranch house a few miles south of Ames. It took the Randalls a long time to find a house they liked and could afford. It took about four months of heavy looking. We looked every weekend and we looked a lot with the real estate agent. I worked a lot with him. We found that what we liked was above our heads in price. Uh, what we could afford was an older home that needed a lot of work on it. And we were kind of disappointed at first, but after the initial heartbreak, we started looking again and we were okay. Like most prospective home buyers, Kim was shocked at how much home ownership would cost. Not only were we shocked about the cost of the house, but we, when we went to the uh, banks and, and savings and loans, the cost of the interest just pushed us out of our limit also. Even though the purchase of their home has been an expensive proposition, the Randalls are glad they're taking the plunge now. We waited quite a while before we got married and we can afford to buy a house or we felt we could afford quite a bit of a house now. And we were v real surprised. We can't afford nearly what we thought we could. And I'm really nervous about the young people that are just getting married with the uh, variable interest loans that will change from year to year. I don't think a lot of kids will be able to afford homes in five, ten years. The Randalls were able to finance the purchase of their home with a 10% land contract. We'll find out about the different ways to finance home purchases and more about the current state of the housing industry in just a moment. Joining us now for a further discussion of the housing industry are Marjean Peterson of Ames Savings and Loan and Chuck Gray, who operates his own real estate agency in Ames. Marjean, I'd like to start with you and let's find out where interest rates stand right now for home mortgages. They're high, aren't they? Very high. As of today, um, the best rate that Ames Savings and Loan has is 17% on an 80% loan. That would require a 20% down payment? 20% down payment. We do have 90% money available, 10% down payment at 17 and a half. Why are the rates so high? The rates are high because uh, we need the income coming into the shop to offset the savings rate that we're paying to our uh, savers right now. It's our loan rates are based on our cost of money. And we're now living with very low yield mortgage rates. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine percent, and we need the higher rates to offset that to try to bring it back into perspective. Any uh, sign of the rates going up or down? I think the rates will stay high. 
uh, with the administration that we're in, we, there's a very large money supply right now. Uh, we're still spending on defense uh, money. With the uh, tightening the Federal Reserve is that I think the rates will stay high. Double digit all through 81. All through 81. We're really going to need some vast improvement in the economy before we can look for anything to go down, I would Very assume. Very definitely. What about mortgages at these rates? Do you have many people who even come in and want them? Uh, since the rates went to 17 percent, uh, it has slowed the activity down, although we have taken a few applications at the 17. The biggest thing is, can they qualify at the 17 on a monthly cash flow basis? Is it tougher to qualify now? Do you take both the husband and the wife's income into consideration? Yes, when you do if it? that's both, the way they working? make application for the loan. What about the availability of money for mortgages at that rate? If a lot of people suddenly decided, what the heck, well, I'll spend the 17 percent. Is there enough money at that rate? If the um, demand became very strong, um, I think we probably would have to raise our rates because we do not have the savings coming in that we need to keep up. What about the length of mortgages? You still write 30-year mortgages or is that all out the window? Our institution is still basically 25-year uh, term mortgages, although uh, we will go a 30 on a new construction. And we may find in the future that more and more loans will be going to the 30 or possibly 40 year term. Chuck, uh, as a, a fellow who tries to get people into houses, uh, one big important thing you have to do now is connect them with the, the financing. What problems uh, do you run into out there? What Margie has said is, is very true. However, there are a lot of other creative methods of financing. Uh, Several inst lending institutions will add on to their, if they have the mortgage on the house, they will add on to it and possibly only raise the rate to 12 and a half and they'll go up to 90 percent of value in some cases. Now they won't do it in all cases. Uh, FHA VAs are at 15 and a half. Uh, with those there are also points involved which have come down since those rates have gone up. Uh, for acreages, this type of thing. Uh, Federal Land Bank is still well under uh, what the conventional loan is. I think they're still 11 or 11 and a half um, with the 20 percent down. Uh, then again we have the contracts, uh, land contracts or contracts for deed, whichever you prefer to call them, where uh, in the lending institution's case, they will raise the rates not up to their maximum. They'll raise them to, uh, they vary with institutions anywhere from 12 to 12 and a half, in some cases 11 and three quarters, or in some cases they have to leave them set. So that means that the seller could sell the house with an override on the interest, and uh, in most cases they can range anywhere from 10 percent on contract to 12, 13, depending, which a lot of people uh, feel is a very good rate and will probably remain a good rate. That seems to be a pretty popular way right now to, to sell mm -hmm. a house and to buy a house. There has to contract. be a caution with that also, the fact that those land contracts are usually written with what we refer to as a balloon payment or the entire balance is due on such and such a date. Uh, the buyers have to be very conscious of that. When financing becomes available in other means or other sources, they should redo it as quickly as possible. Now, how does uh, the land contract work? Uh, the buyer buys it on a contract for a, a specific period of time, three, four, five years, and at the end of that time, they have to find finance. They have to pay it off. It depends off? on what's written into it. You can uh, you can be as creative with a land contract as you can a, a painting. Uh, for example. Uh, you may have a loan on your house of $20,000, you sell it for forty. dollars the buyer puts down ten. Okay, you're carrying him on a contract for $30,000, you owe twenty. So he's paying you on the basis of thirty. dollars you owe twenty. dollars you continue to pay the uh, lending institution. Uh, it's pr we amortize it any period of time that makes it easier for the buyer or however, 25 years, but an uh, entire balance is due at five. Did that answer the question? Yes, it did. Okay. Uh, what about, uh, I want to ask Margene about, so often you see in the paper assuming mortgages. You can assume someone else's mortgage. What do lending institutions think of that? If you've got a, 
a mortgage on the books at a pretty decent rate from a few years ago. Uh, it, how do you handle that? Uh, the lending institutions would like to better their position, especially because of uh, the need for the higher income today. So the institutions are going to increase that rate whenever they can increase it. They do try to make it way below the market rate. Our assumption rate right now is 12 and a half for owner-occupied properties, and that's um, a good rate if somebody can qualify to assume that mortgage today. Do you sell many houses now with people assuming mortgages? If they can acquire the down payment, mm -hmm. and we find that in a lot of cases uh, they'll get help. Mm -hmm. uh, parents, uh, something like that, or in, in some cases Sorry. where we're writing second mortgages. They'll assume it and the owner will carry back what is called a second mortgage, uh, so they assume it with a lending institution. Then they, the seller here again is financing the balance of the $10,000, so to speak, at possibly a different rate. But that underlying mortgage possibly may have stayed the same. Down payment is a, is a big part of the game. Uh, mm -hmm. is, is there any way to buy a house with a small down payment anymore, or do you need a pretty good chunk of change? VAs, 100%. FHA still have their same guidelines as down payment. Uh, on contracts, uh, we have sold them with nothing down. Rare. We've been in the 90% market since the end of oh, October, November of 1980, and I think we've made one or two 90% loans to date. Mm -hmm. So there's very little activity as far as the lending institutions in that particular area. Still, with the cost of housing these mm -hmm. days, 10% uh, of 70 or $80,000 comes up chunk. to a pretty good chunk mm -hmm. of money. Uh, and mo most lending institutions will uh, allow somebody to um, say have a gift letter from a parent uh, or a relative where they don't have any obligation to pay it back. The other thing that I think is important in these high rates is the interest rate, the government still letting everybody deduct, deduct from income taxes 100 percent. If you're in a 50 percent tax bracket and you're paying 17 percent for a loan, you're in effect paying eight and a half because you're taking the entire thing off your income tax. A lot of people are buying houses for tax deductions today. Is that still a good investment, real mm -hmm. estate? Oh, yes. Uh, and the other thing we're finding a lot of people doing, uh, we're fortunate with Iowa State University, parents are buying houses for children. To live in while, in, at while college. attending college. I just did that with my son in, in Wyoming works fine. I've heard of that in other parts of the country I've, I, yeah. and I've read some things. I think this year we've sold three or four yeah. just There's that been way. more activity in it, especially if they have maybe two or three children going to college because then they just keep passing it mm -hmm. for the use of the other child. Own the property for uh, four, five, six years and then so, sell it, I would imagine, at a pretty good profit. The first one that I think we ever did that way, we just turned over a year ago and he had owned it for four years and he came out very well on it. Said it didn't cost a thing to send his child to school. How are real estate uh, people and the lending people getting along these days? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> would assume with tight money problems uh, and the realtor out looking, trying to put people into houses, there, is there any friction out there? I don't think so. No, I, think I don't we, think so. We understand their problems. They understand our problems. We're both a very uh, essential part of the economy. Uh, yes, we may argue with them, why can't you do better than that? But they will bend over, most generally, backwards to try and put together for the uh, transaction for a simple reason. If they can raise that rate from an uh, eight and a half to a 12, aren't they better off? Mm -hmm. What is the housing market like these days? Who, who are the people that are out buying now? Oh, I think there's a lot of people interested in buying right now, a lot of people because they do feel that the appreciation and value real estate is going to continue, and I believe it is. Uh, so they're in, and you know, a home ownership is something that has come down through years. And people really want to own a home. Can everybody own a home? I think so. Even uh, somebody making eight, nine, ten, twelve thousand dollars a year? I think they can come pretty close. It may not be as good a home as some of the others are, but there's ways. Contracts an excellent way for that mm -hmm. type of income. Contracts. Yeah. What about the price of houses? Now I noticed in the last uh, cost of living 
report from the government that uh, house prices uh, were not going up uh, for the past three or four months as much as they had been in the past. Is that leveling off? Do you want to answer that? <laughs> Or does, uh, it, does that depend on the area of the country? I think it depends the on the area. Uh, the, the other thing is that they take the average population uh -huh. and condominiums. What are, what's it like uh, buying a condominium? Uh, isn't that a little more involved than buying a house? Uh, you have association fees and things to pay for. Uh, can it be a little bit deceiving thinking that it's going to be a little cheaper than home ownership? Wow. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh -huh. Uh, for example, the home ownerships will pay for, they all vary, but generally garbage collection, uh, painting an exterior, maintenance of exterior, lawn care, snow removal. Uh, okay, let's say I buy one, I don't need a snow shovel or snow blower or a power mower anymore. Uh, my garbage is picked up with it. Um, it may be more than what you would have paid it normally. But uh, these costs are all pointed out right up front that, and what they cover and, and this type of thing. In some cases, there's swimming pools, uh, tennis court privileges, uh, quite a number of things. How about the central part of Iowa and around Ames? Uh, we saw earlier in, in Des Moines building of new homes is down. Is that true in this area as oh, well? Oh, yes. Uh, January was the first month that there was not a building permit right. issued in, in the city of Ames of any kind, repair, model anything. What about the availability of existing houses? They're available. Any size, shape, form. You don't foresee as in uh, some cities uh, maybe a squeeze on the uh, rental uh, side of the coin with uh, people not being able to buy, a lot more people renting. We Eventually we will. You think so? We will this year. I think it'll be tighter than it has been. Uh, the university's not building any more rentals, uh, so I think you will catch up when without more houses being built, it will become more tight. Chuck, you mentioned uh, empty nesters uh, just a few minutes ago. Do you see many people retiring anymore and selling their homes, getting something smaller? And the, the reason I ask this is that they may have that home paid off or close to being paid off with uh, a 4 or 5 percent mortgage and then selling that and trying to buy something else at 17 uh, percent. What are retirees doing now with their homes? Empty nesters and retirees are two different people. All right, the kids are gone. Oh, they're Correct. still working. Okay. Okay, Fine. they're still working. Uh, they're still in possibly a higher income tax bracket now that the kids are gone, this type of thing. Yes, they're very much interested in that free time aspect. Mm -hmm. They want the yards mode, the yard shovel, or vice versa. Uh, they want to play golf. They want to travel. They want to turn the key, walk away, don't worry about mowing the yard, shoveling the snow, painting the outside. Now the retirees, that's a little different proposition. Uh, the empty nesters are people anywhere from 40 years old on up, where their kids are gone. I think it was President Carter that suggested doing away with the uh, income tax deduction for uh, interest on mortgage payments. Uh, he did. Uh, and I want to ask you, Marjean, uh, there are some who say this this is one of the reasons that uh, uh, interest rates are high, is because we're deduct deducting this, we're not putting it into the, the Treasury, and uh, so the government, to pay off their debts, has to go borrow more money, and the government's in competition with, uh, with private, uh, the private sector, people who want to buy. Do you have any mm. thoughts along that line? <laughs> I don't know probably the right answer for that question. Um, you stumped me, Rick, on that one. Does it bother you, Chuck, something like that? Mm -hmm. I would imagine in your business people. it would. It would bother the home builders, the realtors, the lending institutions. There would be no, uh, there would be no home ownership. There would be no advantages whatsoever. It would put, and it would knock a lot of investors out of it. Uh, oh, it other than the privacy and the security of mm -hmm. their own home. Yeah, it, it would virtually halt. Uh, and the pride and ownership. Right. What are we going to be uh, looking at uh, five, ten years down the line? Are houses getting smaller, the new ones that are being they built? They will. Mm -hmm. They will. Uh, town, it'll be more compact, more per acre. Um, energy efficient is going to become very, very popular. Um, 
it, it, it has to come that way. Land costs are very high. Uh, we don't want to use up our ag land, so we're having to go to other type of lands. It may be further out, so you got to be more energy efficient. And in the meantime, you'll still look for the creative ways to, to finance oh, yes. those houses. We, we even looked for those back when it was good. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the price of a house going to be in a few years from now? My prediction or what I read somewhere? Well, either. Uh, I read that uh, the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors predicted the average price to be 120000 by 1985. I don't think it will be that high. But nonetheless, it gives uh, a little credence to the philosophy of buy now. Now mm -hmm. is the right time to buy. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, we have been talking with uh, Chuck Gray, who operates a real estate agency here in Ames and also with Marjane Peterson from Ames Savings and Loan. Thank you very much. We hope we've provided some answers for some people who might be looking for a home. And thank you for joining us tonight. Mm -hmm.